Hello, Internet, and hello, Fred... Fredrickson? Really? That's the name you chose? That's a pretty boring name. Welcome to After Campfire, and my name is Justin, apparently. I didn't really get to choose my own name, because Sam declared that I must choose a name that we talked about while we were talking about his book, or script, movie script, in the past, so... I guess that made my answer easy. I didn't have to think about it very much. But guess what? This is the first international episode of After Campfire. I'm actually in the middle of Hyde Park in London. If you notice me looking around, it's because I'm kind of afraid of random people approaching me. So yeah, I found a lamp so that I'm partially illuminated. Uh, yeah, it's the middle of the night. I couldn't make my recording from my hotel room because it would wake up my sister so yeah that's what i'm doing by the way i'm here because my cousin's getting married to a british chick Woohoo! good job andy so welcome to london everyone so um although sam already answered my question and i already have the name justin i might as well explain what the deal with that was um, well, I chose Justin because among a bunch of the campers I've had at Lohican, Justin um, is the name of one of my favorite campers who um, has a name that I would actually choose as my own in a story. <laughs> I don't actually usually have problems making names for characters in stories like Sam does. I either try to have a little pun or just choose a normal name that I think is cool. So it's never really been an issue for me. Oh god, I have to face this way. But I'm kind of intrigued why Sam has so many issues. I guess he just tries to overthink it too much. It's just a name. The character's personality isn't based on their name. The, par the character's name is based on their parents. So you either have to think about their parents or just choose a name. It really has not much to do, and doesn't really have anything to do with them. But yeah, that about sums up that question. And Sam, or oh yeah, yeah, so that sums that up. So. This, it's been a while since I've made an episode, because Sam's been really busy, and guess what? I've not. So welcome to the second edition of Henry... No, sorry. No, Justin's <laughs> Diary of How to Adult. Um, so, it's the middle of October. Right? Yeah, middle of October. Job not found yet. Applying. Not as rapidly as I should be. So... I realize that this is a much slower process than I was thinking, which is understandable, and it was really naive of me to think otherwise. But you know what? It happens. Um, I might get a trapeze job in the mean, meanwhile, meantime, at trape at the at T C N Y in L A. So that'll be cool. Um, but yeah, I'm not busy. <laughs> Friends. I need you. It's really awkward because a lot of the times I want to talk to my friends about what's going on. But I never know what to talk to them about since I don't really have much going on. And they have school and stuff so they're busy and I'm just sitting there applying to jobs, trapezing, playing games, whatever. I don't know. My life's weird. Going to London apparently. Cool. That's alright. I wanted to get a monument in this video, the marble arch, but I realize it's kind of dark and I don't want people watching me because whatevs. Um, Sam's question to me though was if I was an inanimate object what would I be? And you know I, I, I believe I think I'd be some kind of puzzle. I'm not sure if it'd be a Rubik's Cube but that's what I'm leaning towards right now just because I'm a very logical centered person like, I like puzzles and solving them and having a solution and finding it. Like, there's only one right way and I'll get there. Um, it was really funny because my mom, as a joke, on our flight to England, gave me a, a few puzzles because that's what she used to give me when I was little. She used to give me math workbooks and puzzles because that's what I love to do, even when I was tiny. That's why I'm good at math. Um... So yeah, I feel like a Rubik's Cube might work well. Maybe a multi-tool. I don't know. It's really hard to describe yourself by one object. Because no one's that simple, man. 
no one. Except maybe dead people. They don't really have much going on anymore. And they could probably be de described by their own books. I mean, books about them. Like, a corpse could probably be described by their own autobiography if someone wrote one. I mean, a biography or an autobiography if they wrote one. So, anyways. Uh, my question for Sam, since I'm in London, I was just curious, or in England, the UK, whatever. I wanted to know... What country would you want to live in if you didn't live in the U.S.? And, by the way, to make it more interesting, no Canada, it's almost the same. And since it's you, Sam, no Israel, I feel like that'd be your next choice. And that seems a little dull. Like, I want you to give me something a little bit more interesting. Um, so anyways, I hope everyone enjoyed this first international after campfire where you can't see anything. I might make another daytime one if Sam makes one soon. And farewell. My name's Justin, and you have been watching After Campfire. Here's a quick extra credit or a bonus video or whatever you want to call it, but look. The Mob Arch. Poof, I am in London. Look at those silly buses from their two deckness. Um, yeah, it's for realsies. You can't see me though. Bye bye.